Hey guys, Yvonne and I have done enough cob and earthen plaster to know that there are three different ways of doing it. You can either mix your uh, product on a tarp, you can make it in a wheelbarrow, or you can make it in a cement mixer. With our uh, personal experience, we are cement mixer people for a couple reasons. The first is it's just a lot easier. We made our first batch of cob on a tarp, and I gotta tell you, I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. Uh, the amount of cardio necessary to get that cob mix properly made, it was just more than I wanted to deal with. Uh, we've made it in a wheelbarrow. Uh, when we did the top coat of the solar shed behind us here, uh, we made, we didn't have access to a cement mixer and we made the entire top coat in a wheelbarrow. When we made it in a wheelbarrow, we found that we had to let it sit a while uh, for the straw to properly absorb the liquid. In the cement mixer, it's, first of all, it's automated and we can let it run while we continue to apply plaster from the previous batch and that just speeds things up and makes it a lot easier. So we had access uh, to a cement mixer from our neighbor and friend Derek Handyman Howlett. And you know, at one point in time, you gotta say, we appreciate being able to borrow it, but at the same time, we should probably invest in our own. So that's what we did. And uh, so now the first part of this video you're gonna see is the unboxing and assembly of the uh, cement mixer. And the second part of the video is going to be a little bit of preparation for the materials for our cobbing uh, of the tool shed that will begin in actually tomorrow. So let's get started with the assembly of the cement mixer. Don't believe everything you read. So I've got all the pieces out of the box and I must say it's very impressive how every single part is shrink wrapped individually. And I also like how they have the appropriate nuts and bolts put in the, the uh, appropriate spots. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the uh, gear mount for the motor and it's individually wrapped. Every bolt, nut and washer is already in place. So there's no searching around for the right uh, hardware to assemble uh, an individual component. It's a nice touch. The instructions are not difficult to follow, but they are difficult to follow in regards that the pictures are really bad. So I've just started and I'll let you know how it goes. I just wanted to show you how this thing is packaged and it was pretty impressive. I've got the frame put together and uh, it goes together pretty easily. The nuts are 
uh, have built-in washers on them and also are ridged on the back side, which is kind of nice. I was going to use some Loctite, but I think I'll wait on that just for the meantime. Uh, the next step is going to be to install the tires on the axle. And when I purchased this thing, you know, I read all the descriptions and everything, and I read the description as having run flat tires. I unpack the tires and there's a valve stem on it. So how can this be a run flat? I look back at the box and they're not run flat. They're flat resistant tires. Well, we'll see how that works on this terrain out here. Uh, in worst case scenario, I'm going to have to replace them with uh, real run flat tires. But for now, they'll have to work. So it must have just been a middle-aged moment, but by far the most complicated thing to assemble was this flange onto the bottom of the barrel. There's a rubber gasket that uh, goes between this flange and the barrel, and it is extremely tight getting those bolts through. And it was just a little confusing because the instructions are poorly written. Once you realize how it works, then getting the assembly done isn't that difficult. So there you can see it's just bolted to the inside. What threw me was this black flange. See how that has a square cutout on it? The bolts have a square, um, a square shank to it to lock into that type of square cutout. It was the same thing with these uh, six bolts that you see in the center of the screen right there. But then when I looked around and I realized the assembly from the factory shows the nut on the inside and not the head of the bolt, I realized it's just got to be consistent. So I just went with it, and I'm sure it'll work. But that was a point where the installation instructions could certainly be improved. So there it is in all its glory. Uh, it took probably about an hour and a half to put together, really taking my time. It's done, and it wasn't difficult. I just had nothing else to do right now, so I thought I'd take my time and you know, kind of enjoy the process. It was strange. The instruction manual didn't even talk about, or the assembly instructions didn't even talk about uh, installing the blades on the inside of the barrel. Perhaps at one point in time, they were uh, pre-installed from the factory. So there it is. This will do two, I believe two 80 pound bags at one time, uh, up to three 60 pound bags of cement at one time. It is the half horsepower uh, motor, and that was one of the reasons we bought this one. Let me give you a little bit of background on that. We were going to get the Harbor Freight uh, cement mixer. The uh, Harbor Freight from Central Machinery has a one-quarter horsepower motor. This is a one-half horsepower motor. This product here, or this model, is also available in a three-quarter horsepower, which is what we had used when we borrowed Handyman's. Uh, cement mixer. It was basically the exact model as this, except for a bigger motor. And it did run about $150 more for that larger motor. So we're hoping the half horsepower is going to be sufficient for our needs. So let me uh, kick it on and you'll hear the another nice thing that we really liked is this is a direct drive machine. And you can hear how quiet it is. One of the major complaints about the machine from uh, Harbor Freight is that it's really noisy and this thing is whisper quiet as you can hear. Anyways, so uh, I think it's going to be Saturday. We're going to start cobbing. So I'm going to pack this baby up and we'll see you on Saturday for some cobbing. Mm -hmm. 